the multiplicity is basically uh, the exponent on that factor. It tells us how many of the zeros that zero counts as. In other words, if the zeros of a function of degree three are uh, zero as multiplicity two and five. That means two of the factors are X minus zero. That's squared. And the other factor is X minus five. Well, X minus zero is just X. So this is X squared times X minus five, which is just X cubed minus five X squared. So that's the function we're looking for. It's a third degree front function right here. Two of the zeros are zero and one zero is five. Recall that while it's not necessary in this section, that means the graph is gonna be tangent to the x-axis at the point zero, zero. And it passes through the x-axis at the point five, zero. Now, another thing, if factor is linear, it's gonna give us one answer. If a factor is quadratic and it won't factor into two nice linear factors, then we would have to solve it using the quadratic formula, in which case we're going to get conjugates. The quadratic formula always gives conjugate when we have complex or irrational fa factors or irrational zeros. If they're rational numbers, five and negative seven, we don't consider those conjugates. I'm sure we could figure out a way to write them as conjugates, but we don't. But the complex and irrational zeros that we can't write perfectly as an integer or a decimal or even a rational number always come in pairs. And they actually have a rule that if, now this assumes that the coefficients are rational numbers if the coefficients of a function are rational numbers, if you don't have like a square root of three as a coefficient, and one zero is irrational, has a square root in it, then its conjugate is also a zero. In other words, an irrational zero might be uh, three plus five on the square root of two. If three plus five on the square root of two is a zero, and the coefficients that you get for the terms when you multiply it out are rational numbers, then somehow this radical has to get canceled out when you're multiplying. So it also means that three minus five square root of two is automatically a zero.
If negative square root of seven is a zero, then the positive square root of seven is a zero. The term that you change the sign in front of is just the term with the radical. Notice that these both have positive threes. The second rule is very much the same. It says if the coefficients are real, if the coefficients are real numbers, meaning they don't have an I in them, and one of the zeros is a complex number a plus bi, where b is not equal to zero. They have to put this in because all numbers are complex numbers. It's just that the real numbers are complex numbers where b is zero and you don't have the i term in it. So this just covers this. It's gonna be like three plus five i. So if three plus five i, is a zero, then once again, it's conjugate is also a zero. In other words, if five I is a zero, then negative five i is also a zero. If you have seven minus four i, then seven plus four i is automatically a zero.